Hey friends, Robert Ham here with roberthamphotography.com. Guys, today I just wanted to share with you my range finders. These aren't all of them, <laughs> but there are some of them. Now, I really, really enjoy a range finder camera, and that's what this video is really all about, okay? So, currently I have two range finder film cameras. I've got two more on the way. And I'm doing that. I'm buying these cameras for you guys. You have to understand that. I'm buying them. They take a lot of things to, to fix and get working again. Um, and and I'm, I'm doing it because I want to share this experience with you all. That's, that's why I'm getting them. Um, and then I've got these two. So I've got my Olympus RD right here. Uh, I also have my Olympus RC. That's at the shop right now. It's on its way to the shop to get that focusing issue fixed and to get a complete CLA. I've got another Olympus RC that I bought for parts to come here because I want to fix the RCs that I order. And I've got an Olympus DC coming in. That's Deluxe Compact. That sucker right there has a backlight compensation. It's all electronic and no manual override. So it's much more of a point and shoot like you would experience but um, still has that same F-Zucchio 1.7 millimeter or, or F1.7 42 millimeter lens. So still great. So it's really the RC, the RD, and the DC are all in the same family of cameras. They're all this very similar size, excuse me, they're very similar size and everything else. In fact, we can talk about it right here. So they're, they're pretty much just like this um, as far as size-wise is concerned. And uh, the, SP, the RC is the smallest of them. Um, anyways, it, it, that doesn't matter right now, but my point is I like them. They're expensive to buy and fix. You can get them for cheap online, but when you got to start fixing them, ooh, it, can, it can get kind of expensive. That means too this, my goal for this is to buy them, document them, fix them, experience them, enjoy them, run film through them like they should be, and then sell them so that others can experience it. And I think for me, the one I like, the range finder is the way to go. And that's what this video is about. Here's my Olympus, Olympus. Here's my Fuji X100S. This is still my favorite camera of all time. I take this camera with me everywhere. Although since I've been shooting film, I've been taking my film cameras with me. And shooting with the Sunny 16 rule, I gotta tell you, has really boosted my confidence. I definitely understand how to shoot film uh, and shoot digital. I, I started shooting film, but that was over 10 years, 12 years ago. I've been shooting digital for uh, the past five years specifically for my wedding business. And what I have found is it is on like Donkey Kong, okay? I've got some beautiful range finders back here, the Minolta X570. I've got a Canon EF, a Pentax uh, KX. And I've got to tell you that Minolta right here that I got from my Uncle John, for doing a family portrait session. That thing is gorgeous for portraits. I absolutely love it. So guess what? You'll also notice back there that little purple. Yeah, that's Kodak Portra 400. And I also have some Ektar 100. And I've got some uh, Pro 400H coming in from Fujifilm, thanks to B&H. Not that they gave it to me, but I mean, thanks. I'm glad they keep it that stuff in stock because guess what? I'm beginning to offer film, boutique engagement and portrait sessions. And I will be using cameras like this beautiful 42 millimeter F1.7. I'll also be using my 50 F1.4. I'll also be using my 85 F1.4. Man, there's, there's a lot of excitement going on with film. And film is very, very, very legitimate right now. It's legitimate to you. It's very pertinent to what's going on because it is a feel, it's a real physical connection to the medium that you're working and that's what I like about it. And it has a different look and an aesthetic. When you stop looking at a picture and stop thinking of your cell phone as the idea for taking a photo, I mean, the number one camera that people use is the iPhone. I think the second camera out there on Flickr is a Galaxy, right? So these are cell phone images, right? They're cell phone images. The sensor is smaller or just about as small as your pinky finger thumbnail, your pinky finger fingernail. It's tiny. It gives you a deep depth of field. There are some software tricks that allow you to have nice bokeh and a little bit of, of, of blurriness in the background, but it's definitely not a camera in the same class as a digital camera, especially in the same class as a full frame or medium format. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get at. Film has a completely 
different aesthetic. You treat it differently. You develop it differently through your workflow, even when you get your scans back. And that is that organic, real-life connection is what I am excited about. So range finders, why do I think that they're important? Even when you got this big honking like this, okay, this is Fuji's X-Pro1. I absolutely like it. This is a Roki 9 85 f1.4. It's a manual lens, probably not the best lens to pair with this, but it's challenging, right? It's challenging. And um, the only reason that it wouldn't be the best lens to pair with this is because it's manual focus. And although you can manually focus, it's a very slow process to get tack sharp. When you do, it is blissfully rewarding. When you miss it, it's just irritating. A camera like the Fuji X-T1 or X-T2, or even the X-Pro2, this would be a completely different thing, mainly because of the optics involved, right? And, and well, not just optics, the, the viewfinder. But my point is, we still have a real through the, through the viewfinder view, right? We also have a magnified viewfinder. Uh, we also have an electronic viewfinder. Same thing here with Fuji's X100S. We've got those things except the magnified viewfinder. And understanding how exposure works and taking uh, thousands and thousands of photos here really harkens me back to the days where I'm shooting film through this camera. And the number one thing that shooting with the Sony 16 rule will do for you as a photographer is it will engage your confidence, it will grow your artistic creativity, and it will take your knowledge to the next level. And that's the number one thing that shooting with these cameras have done for me. I've shot digital for so long, and with mirrorless, I absolutely love mirrorless, being able to see my exposure on the electronic viewfinder in here before I even push the shutter, being able to see what I'm gonna get is absolutely amazing. So when I started shooting film, I kind of felt like I was at a handicap when I started because there was no exposure. You just had to take the picture and trust that it was right. So what do you do? The first rolls, you go through and you work your Sony 16 rule and you get it developed. You realize you had some light leaks. Oh man, you got to replace the light seals. And your second roll, you go through. Oh man, you realize your exposure is not right. So you shoot, so you worry and you think, oh man, is it good or bad? So then you shoot some targets to make sure that your, your mechanical shutter, because this is a, a 40 set, 45 year old camera. Right? I'm, I'm 35, it's 10 years older than me. Actually, it's more than that. I'm 35, 45. Jeez, I can't even think. It's 70s. Yeah, 70s. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so 30, whatever. My point is, then you realize, okay, great. Now you understand that your shutter speeds and whatever are a quarter of a stop or a half a stop off. So that's why you got to take that into consideration. Then you go out and shoot. Now with all that knowledge that you've got, you, you go out and you shoot, and then you were preparing or re, uh, creating beautiful photos. That's a completely different thing. That's where the confidence comes in because then it says, okay, you've got a good, valid understanding and working, and if you can do it in film, digitals, it doesn't even matter the same way because if it can be done right in film, it can be done right anywhere because film is the physical, real medium. So what, what shooting film has done for me has been to corroborate that I felt like I could take a good film photo. I used to shoot film uh, when I was in high school, and then I started shooting film again, and it has just opened up that love for why I was shooting in the first place, why I was photographing in the first place. So for me, being a photographer, being this is what I do, I want to share that with you. So I'm suggesting go and get a camera, go buy a film camera, and I think that a rangefinder is great. First of all, zooming in and out, that's wonderful. I use a zoom lens for weddings and everything, uh, 55 or 18 to 55 and 55 to 200 or whatever, those are necessary, right? But for my walk around everyday lenses, I like fast primes and I like a standard view, like something around 40, 35, 40, 50. Those, that's where I really enjoy it because then I can capture everything. I can get my kids playing, I can lay down on the ground if my son's jumping out of a swing above me and I can press that shutter and know that I'm gonna catch him in the air because my my field of view is wide enough to do that. It really is eye-opening. I truly enjoy it. Uh, zooming is, is great for you want to crop in and get real intimate shots from far away. Def lot, definitely can get a lot of compression and everything. But for me and for you, I think that starting off with a rangefinder camera is the way to go. And let me just give you a little comparison. My favorite X 
uh, 100S camera. You guys know that compared to the Olympus 35 RD right here, Rangefinder Deluxe, man, these things are very similar in size. Of course, this one weighs a little bit more. F1.7 on the lens as compared to F2 on the lens. Built-in ND filter, both have flash synchronization. This one goes up to, uh, you know, one four thousandth of a second. We're capping off here at one five hundredth of a second. But aside from that, you can walk out on any sunny day and you can very easily, for me, I usually shoot right here, start off at uh, sunny 16, uh, you know, 16 ISO 125. I go down, I can go up 250 to 500. So I go down 16, 11, 8. And most of the time, since I can recover a lot, I push it right down to uh, 5.6 on a sunny day, shooting at 1 500th of a second right here. And I get beautifully, beautifully, beautifully composed photos. I, I love it. And because I like a photo that's just a little bit, um, darker, right? I find that I'm still able to capture a lot of the beautiful blues in the sky. That's important. Now, on ugly, nasty, dreary days where color matters, break out black and white film. Oh my God. If it's a rainy day, you've already got the mood set. Break out your black and white camera, call it a day. I don't like shooting outside with color when it's really blah. You get that sky that's overcast that comes across. Everything looks gray, like, mm, like strong sad, you know, from homestarrunner.com. Hmm, nobody likes me. Hmm, you know, it's the gray elephant looking guy. Anyways, uh, that's my point. Once you get out there, just get some black and white film in there. And that gets rid of all the color problems because it's black and white. And then throw on a nice orange filter or a blue filter and just pff, see what happens. Guys, I'm here to tell you, this is something you can do. It's something that you can do enjoyably. And it's something that you can do daily. You can get into doing that daily. Guys, I'm Robert Ham with RobertHamPhotography.com. You can catch me over on Twitter at RobHamPhoto. You can even find me on both Facebook and YouTube. And as always, keep shooting, my friends.